Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Build Computers. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to update your motherboard for th uh, Ryzen 3rd Gen, so the Ryzen 3000 series, also known as Zen 2. Um, so this is obviously quite a common issue that's cropping up on a lot of builds at the moment, where a lot of people, they've gone out and bought themselves a really tasty uh, Ryzen 3700X. Um, however, they've opted for an X470 motherboard because the X470 motherboards are a lot better value for money at the moment. X570 is quite expensive for what you're getting at the time of making this video. So it's quite a common choice to drop to an X470 or even a B350 motherboard. Um, so uh, you've seen me do this in other repair videos a couple of times, but I thought I'd make this video as a reference. So when people are just like, how do I update my motherboard? I can say, go watch this video. So let's get started. Now, the, this build we've got here, we've got an Asus Prime X470 motherboard, and uh, I think this has a 3600X in it, or a 3700X, it doesn't really matter which, it's a 3000 series CPU. So this nice, lovely built computer has just been assembled and it doesn't post because the board doesn't support the CPU. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the computer into a booting state so we can update it. Now, there are two ways to do this. Uh, the first way is if you have a very exotic motherboard, there are some high-end motherboards out there that um, have what's known as BIOS flashback or chipless flash, where you can um, update the motherboard's BIOS without having a CPU in the board. Um, however, this is quite an exotic trick that not very many motherboards can do. I'm not going to cover how to approach that because depending on what motherboard and what brand you have will change how you actually do that but I'm just, making sure, I'm just making known that that is a thing that exists. The way that we're gonna do it today is we need a donor CPU. So for that, I have this AMD A8 9600. This is quite an old, early AM4 CPU, so it basically works in anything. And I have this on hand specifically for updating motherboards. Now, the difficulty with all of this is, is that you need one of these to do this. And that's what makes this a very awkward job because if you're building your computer at home, you don't just have CPUs lying around like I do. Um, but whatever, uh, if you need to, you can either find a local computer shop who will be a bro like I'm doing for this chat and update your, your board for you. Um, or you can jump on eBay and find one of these. I originally bought this thing for like 40 pounds um, I would imagine you can find them for a lot less than that now. You can probably find a second-hand one. You don't need, like, literally anything will do. The cheapest AM4 CPU you can find that's compatible with your motherboard. That's all you need. Buy it, keep it as a spare, or just flip it again on eBay, or chuck it out when you're done. Who cares? Um, so, yeah. Right, I'm going to unbox this guy. We're going to take the CPU cooler off, and we're going to fit this CPU into the board so this computer can start. And when it starts, we can then do a BIOS update. Let's do it. Okay, so here's our uh, 3700X coming out, and it is a 3700X in this case. Obviously, when you're handling your CPU, be careful about those pins. You don't want to bend one of those fellas, otherwise you might be in for a bad time. So. Um, I have cleaned off the thermal paste and I'll be putting new thermal paste onto these chips. Um, if you are at home and you just use the pre-applied stuff that came pre-applied to your Wraith cooler, um, uh, you will, in a pinch, you can reuse that thermal paste because the basic purpose of the thermal paste is just to fill the tiny cracks between the chip and the heatsink. So it's not an absolute crime to reuse it and just plonk it back on top again. However, if you can, I would recommend spending a couple of quid on a tube of thermal paste like this MX4 that I have. This is a couple of quid on eBay and then you can put some fresh stuff on it. And with AMD, uh, with uh, Ryzen 3000, I would strongly recommend this because Ryzen 3000 behaves a lot like a GPU. The cooler it is, the faster it goes. So you do actually want to try and bring those temperatures down as much as you can. Okay, our A8 donor chip is now in the board 
and I've just perched the cooler on top. I've just sat that on top of the CPU. I haven't bothered clamping it though. We don't need to worry about that. This is gonna make it run a little bit warm, but we really don't care about temperatures right now. All we gotta do is flash the BIOS and then that chip is coming back out again anyway. So there's no point in getting exotic with thermal paste on the donor chip. Okay, we're plugged in and ready to start. Let's turn it on and we should get a picture from it. Okay, we got lights. It's all very RGB and beautiful. Now remember, if this is the first time this motherboard has ever turned on, it's likely to take maybe 30 seconds to actually post. Uh, it's completely normal to be sitting on a black screen with no signal for a while. However, as you can see, this one has now started. So we've got our BIOS screen. Uh, so where are we up to? Please enter setup to recover BIOS setting. That's fine. Uh, motherboards will often get upset when you've been messing around with the system configuration a lot, especially when you change the CPU. So it's not really surprising that it's telling us that we've got to recover the BIOS. Um, while we're here, we'll just sanity check the rest of it. So you can see uh, that reading on the left, we've got an AMD A8 CPU fitted, which is correct and we've got 32 gigs of RAM, which is also correct. So that all looks fine. Our RAM is running really slow. It's at DDR4-2133. Um, that's definitely not what we want it to be on. However, that's not something we're particularly concerned about, but that's something that we are gonna wanna check later. Uh, again, Ryzen 3000 loves RAM speed, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you're getting the most out of your RAM later on. So I'll press F1 to run setup. And what we want to do is identify exactly what board and what BIOS we have so we know what we need to get to update this thing. And as we can see up in the top left here, we have a Prime X470 Pro BIOS version 4207. So that's the bit of information that I really wanted to know. X470 Pro and 4207 on the BIOS. So now what we've got to do is go to the Asus website and find the updated BIOS for this board. So let's hit up a browser on another computer. Okay, Asus Prime X470 Pro. Okay, so here's the Asus webpage for this motherboard. So first what we wanna do is just double check that our CPU is actually supported, which is going to be, but we'll check it for posterity. So if we go over to support, then CPU memory support, and if we scroll down a little bit, we need to track down our Ryzen 7 3700X. There it is. And it is supported. And it's supported on ver BIOS version 4804. And if you, re if you remember, we're currently on 4207. So that's the BIOS we need. They've actually very handily provided a Go link to that particular BIOS. So, um, uh, but we'll put the latest on here. So let's scroll back up to the top. And I want to find the driver, BIOS and firmware, and wow, look at that, we're on 5220, so yeah, plenty to update to. So interestingly, the latest BIOS update is 5220, but if we look at the update notes, removes Gen 4 support when using Ryzen 3000 CPUs. This is a funny little thing that's come up lately, and I won't go into the full details of it in this video, but um, the this this X470 motherboard could actually do PCI Express Gen 4 to the graphics card with a Ryzen 3000 CPU in it, because the Ryzen th the CPU is direct is directly connected to the first PCI Express slot on the motherboard, which means if you put a Ryzen 3000 CPU in it, you actually get Gen 4. But they're actually removing that because AMD didn't like that. They're just like, no, 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 you need X570 if you want that. So I'm actually gonna drop down one version um, to the previous version, which doesn't remove that. So we get the bodged uh, PCI Express Gen 4 support. So let's hit download on that. And we'll open that up and just see what's inside. So we've got a single cap file. So I've got to put that on a flash drive now so I can then transfer it over to our computer. So I'm gonna get a flash drive and I'm gonna format my drive to FAT32, which is just a, an insurance. 
Most motherboards will probably read NTFS these days. However, if you format it to FAT32, you're just guaranteed not to have any compatibility issues at this point. And now I'll copy that to my flash drive. Copy and paste. Done and done. And just make sure you click on the safely remove hardware in the bottom right of your screen and safely remove your flash drive just to make sure that BIOS file gets properly written. Um, you don't want to hot plug your flash drives when file integrity is critical as it is for this operation. Right, back on the computer in question. Um, there's no option to update the BIOS on this current screen we're on. So I'm gonna click advanced mode that's in the bottom right, just behind the camera. And that brings us into the more advanced menus. And over on the tools menu right here, we have uh, Asus Easy Flash 3 utility. That's gonna be our BIOS updater. So let's go into that. And ah, interestingly, this particular board has an up option to update from the internet. So we could plug in a uh, ethernet cable and flash it across the internet. I've done this before on other boards. It's completely safe to do so. Um, however, we've already downloaded our BIOS, so we're gonna do it via storage device. So we'll click on that and hit next. And here's our flash drive connected. And then there's the file X470 Pro 5216. Yes, I want to read this file. So BIOS information, Prime X470 Pro, that's what we have. Version 5216, that's what we want to go to. And the date of the BIOS is the 2nd of September this year. And it's the 28th of September, so it's a recent update as well go. Right, and that is now processing. So now we've just got to wait for that progress bar to travel across the screen. Right, our BIOS update is complete and the computer has automatically restarted. So we'll just wait for that to hit BIOS again. Okay, right, and we're back to the recover BIOS screen. So I'm going to F1 to run setup. Okay, and now as you can see in the top left, we're now on BIOS version 5216. So our BIOS update is successful. So now we can switch off the computer and swap the CPUs back to our new 3700X. When applying thermal paste, the general tactic is, is to put a cross on the CPU, so just paint an X across it with a bead of thermal paste. And in case anyone wants to challenge that, that is the recommended method by Cryonaut, who make some of the best thermal paste in the world. So that's how they say to do it, so that's how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and I've cleaned up the bottom of the CPU cooler so we've got a nice clean finish on that. You can see a slight haze where there's a little bit between the gaps. We're not bothered about that. That's not gonna make any meaningful difference. Let's get this thing dropped back on. And when your CPU cooler is fitted, you should be able to give it just a bit of a wiggle. If it doesn't move at all, it might be too tight. All done, let's turn it on and we should get a post with our nice new CPU. Again, we're expecting a long post because we've changed the CPU. So the motherboard might be upset again.
and yeah, it's making me wait. There we go, I've got a blue light on the screen. And we're back into BIOS. And now, as you can see, if we go F1 for setup, we have a Ryzen 7 3700X eight core processor. Jobs are good. Un. Okay, so as I hinted earlier on, this computer does still need some more tweaking. Our memory is sitting down at 2133 megahertz, and that's no bueno for this CPU. We want to get that speed up to at least, well, I mean, I'm not sure what rating this memory is supposed to be because I didn't build this computer. However, really, you don't want to be putting anything less than 3000 uh, megahertz memory into with this CPU. I mean, you can and it'll work, but you're going to actually bottleneck your CPU if you've got anything under three gigahertz. So uh, we're probably going to want to make sure that XMP profiles are turned on and stuff like that. However, that is a conversation for another time, so I won't go into that right now. Uh, however, everything's good and we've now got a booting system with a 3700X and that's it. You can go ahead and install Windows on your new computer now. Thank you very much for watching everyone. If you have any more questions or comments, stick them down below and otherwise, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.